so that was that. And then I said, let me read you the letter we got from the minister. And basically where it says you are innately obligated to provide secular education to your residents as a public school board. And I, and I said, this is the letter we have from the minister. This is what he told us. He's not saying somebody else. He's saying you as our public school board. Do you say it? And uh, they looked us in the face and they said, we disagree with the minister. So we wait again. <laughs> so of course we wrote letters and we talked to the minister and said, this is, there seems to be a discrepancy between what we understood you to think their obligation is and what they are saying their obligation is. So please help us out here, intervene, um, get back to us. And uh, so we continue to wait. Uh, the minister in his letter said that the g Secret board had committed to doing three things. One was to do a survey of interested parents to find out who wants a secular education in Mournville. The second was to have a meeting with the parents and those I represent who want a secular education. And the third was to meet with Sturgis School Division with the possibility that they would be the ones, because they're the neighboring school board around Mournville oh, board, uh, to see if the possibility was there that they could offer the program. So they've met with Sturgis Schools, they've met with us, and the survey is going to happen next week. It's a sample survey. Uh, it's not going to every door, not to census. Uh, it's going home in the mail, I understand, or in the backpacks of every student who's enrolled currently in their schools, in the greatest seven schools. So it's, and then there's a 400 person sample survey of the rest of the electorate. So parents who have already pulled their children from the schools who are attending St. Albert Protestant or certain school division, get a risk that they're gonna be surveyed and they're the ones who already made the move to find a secular education somewhere else. And uh, the parents who have children who are going to start kindergarten next year, or maybe the year after, hit or miss 400 sample survey to find out what they think. So we wrote to the minister again and said, it's a sample survey, it's not a census. We are concerned because what can we do with sample numbers? We'll just have to do an actual census after. Like, it seems redundant. Why can't we do an open house and start the registration and then you'll know numbers because they'll be registered. Um, but we're waiting. And, uh, <coughs> So that's kind of where we are now. Um, G Sacred has put an ad in the paper in our local communities, explaining our request uh, as they see it, and telling us when the survey's gonna happen. We were concerned by the wording of this, the way they put our request, because they didn't say, which was our request, that we would like a public secular education for our children, like exists across the province, across the country, uh, and as meets the requirements of the Constitution, because I, I drilled down to the Constitution to the exact place where it says what is permitted and what is limited for religious instruction in Alberta. And it's 30 minutes at the end of the day and beginning of the day of the Lord's Prayer. That's all that's in the Constitution. Everything else is at the board's discretion to add, but that's all that's constitutionally protected. So we're saying that is the public education that we would like to see available for children in Mormon, so that you may opt in, you're not required to opt out, and you're certainly not denied the regular education. You're not denied opting out. So we <laughs> uh, So where we are right now is we're having a forum, a fantastic forum on Thursday by the Sheldon Shearer Foundation for Ethics and Leadership, where they're going to come out and talk to us about public education, what it is, what it should be. Linda McKee Panos is going to talk about the background and the constitutional legalities. Dr. Frank Peters, I understand, is going to talk about the history of uh, denominational separate schools and public education in Alberta, and Mr. David King is going to be there as well. He's going to be talking on the subject, and he can talk more about what he's going to talk about. <laughs> um, but the Patty Dietrich, uh, the president of the Public School Board Association, will also be there, and we're very pleased because just recently um, she got together with her member partners, which is all the public school boards in Alberta who are members, which are, I think, 40, 60, I should know the number. Anyway, they all got together and they actually made a motion that said we move to publicly support the Morville Parent Delegation and the request for non-denominational secular education in Morville. And it was unanimous. And they all voted in favor. And we got a nice letter that showed their public support and we were very encouraged by that. So we're excited to hear her stand up and tell the advocacy of the Public School Board Association and what they understand public schools to be. And uh, what unfortunately our children are being denied in Morville. So that's my story <laughs> and where we are now and that we just keep pushing ahead and, uh, and trying to pick up on everything that's happening. I brought a whole bunch of newspaper articles that sort of are the chronology of our efforts and 
really has just been one, it's been a lot of discouragement uh, and trying to follow the process and say, okay, well now you have to do this, well we did this, well now you have to do this, well we did this. And the point is nothing has changed. As much as we've done, as much as the press has followed, as much as we, we thought for a minute that the minister had heard our, and understood our concerns, um, G. Sacred still saying no, and Durban School Division is not able to come in because they have no jurisdiction in Mournville. It's not their public school board. And until the minister steps in, we're waiting on the results of the survey. They're supposed to come in at the end of May, um, but we're very concerned about those results because, of course, it's just a sample. And we're running out of time. If uh, we don't get the information by the end of May, there's very little to no chance that something will actually be in place. September 1st. We, we don't have much hope that there'll actually be a school, maybe a kindergarten class, something. Uh, if Stern School Division isn't given the authority to step in, they're willing, they're wanting, they're ready, but uh, without permission, without G Sacred saying you're the one, the minister saying let's do this, they can't do a thing. And uh, G Sacred has already formally said they're not going to be able to provide the program, so it's kind of confusing to us why they hold all the power if they're refusing. But again, we need to follow up on that. So. All I can say is thank you very much for letting me come and speak to you and tell my story. And there's lots of other stories in the back of the room uh, if you're interested in hearing theirs as well and their perspectives. But if you have questions, I'd be very, very happy to answer them. Thank you. Side. I came here not expecting to, be, to speak. I didn't expect to be sitting at the front. <laughs> but you'll notice when I was asked if I wanted to say a few words, I said yes. <clears throat> Let me start by asking, because I don't know the audience, how many of you are from Morinville? I recognize a few faces. Okay, good. And um, I'd like to ask the others very quickly, sort of, what perspective do you stand on when you come to these meetings? Uh, is it student? Is it because of your employment? Is it uh, something else? Just somebody shout out a few words why you're here. Well, I, I can, I can, being on the board here, I can answer that there's a, a mix, uh, a variety of, of members. Some are students, some are involved in the university atheist club, some just uh, found our club through uh, the journal ad we put in or, uh, or on our website and have come together. So there's really a broad perspective of, uh, of people here that come together in our society of Edmund atheists. Not all of us necessarily are atheists, but all of us have certainly a secular or secular humanist uh, uh, agnostic outlook and look at and talk about issues from that perspective. Okay, I appreciate that. Does anybody want to add? It's also a key point out that Several of us come from different backgrounds. Some of us have had theistic upbringings, very, very religious. Some of us have been raised in a completely secular background. But a lot of us come together because uh, this has often been, for many, uh, the only place where we can turn to find people who will understand right. and recognize that we're not evil people. We just don't happen to believe in God. Yes. Um, for me, it was a little bit of shock coming from another country. Um, and as much as you may believe from my accent, I actually lived in Australia prior to coming in. Um, and coming to Alberta and having my children in a class, uh, and mine are in the Sturgeon uh, School District, uh, and having them forced to observe the Lord's Prayer in the morning actually is what set off my radar. Um, and then caught sight of uh, Donna and her fine group here and their efforts in Morinville. And then looking at my experiences in Australia and part of that in the UK, just astounding to me, frankly, that in 2011, we're even fighting for a secular education system in a country like Canada. It's mind boggling to me to come from the outside and to see what is entrenched here. Good, I appreciate that. <clears throat> 
Um, I actually have two interests that converge in Morinville. Um, and I'd like to speak for just a moment to both of them. I think that what G Sacred is doing is wrong and unacceptable. Okay? And that is the question of whether or not a legally, constitutionally public school system in Alberta can permeate one faith in the context of public school education. Okay? I think that is wrong and that we need to deal with it and we really need to get past it. Okay? And that's what interests Donna and that's what interests the people from uh, Morinville. Now, separate from that, I have a different concern, which is about the future of separate school education in the province. You may know that uh, I've got a petition on a website and I am saying, first of all, that we should have a conversation about the future of separate school education in the province. And in my view, that conversation should culminate in a referendum of Albertans about the future of separate school education. I don't think that decision should be made by the government of the moment, whatever party it is. I think it's such a big decision and so important to all of us that it's the kind of decision I think should be determined by a referendum of Albertans. I'm going to try to keep these two issues clear tonight when I make a few comments, but I will sometimes be talking about one and sometimes about the other. Uh, though they are separate, they, they bear some relationship to each other. And the other thing I want to say by way of introduction uh, is that personally, I am a person of faith, okay? I'm a pretty active member of the United Church. My wife is a very active Roman Catholic. Uh, we raised our children sometimes in the public system and sometimes in the separate system, which we could legally do because we're a mixed marriage. Uh, but this is such an important question for Albertans. It's what some politicians call a wicked question, okay? Because it's difficult. It arouses emotions. People can get pretty upset with each other. But a community is in bad shape if it can't have a conversation about wicked problems, okay? And you have to know where I am coming from, and I have to know where you are coming from, we be, we've got to be able to have this conversation okay, and be respectful of each other even if we disagree. 